green glowing light in the sand. It's right here. Whoa, so huge. Then let's investigate. What you got? It's a crab, but it's it has some beautiful markings. I've never seen this before. That's gorgeous. No. It's like yeah. black and white. Yeah. Or greenish. Does he have hairs on his legs? No. Oh wait. Yes, he does. Hemograpsis organensis. Speak English, please. <laughs> hairy short hairy short crab. Hairy short crab. Yeah. And, and they are really diverse in color. You, you know, usually they're just green. And I'm gonna take a wild guess. This one's not in its typical habitat. It's, it's usually up under rocks. So maybe it has this color to blend in with the sand and the stuff, I don't know. That is so neat. If this creature, if this anemone, this mm -hmm. moon glow is gonna eat that crab, where's its mouth? Its mouth is in the very center of all these tentacles. Okay. Why does it feel sticky when I touch it? It's trying to eat you. Ew. <laughs> Each tentacle is covered with stinging cells that are shaped kind of like harpoons. Uh -huh. And they fire those into um, whatever touches them. It's an automatic reaction. Mm -hmm. In each harpoon is poison intended to paralyze their prey. Mm -hmm. um, but our fingers are too thick for it to penetrate, so you just feel them pulling at you. Okay. Which creates the stickiness. In addition to the wide variety of colors and sizes of anemones on the beach at low tide, you may have noticed quite a lot of other creatures as well. Then again, maybe you didn't. So many of these creatures try to hide while the tide is out, but once you learn a little about these plants and animals, you'll find them easier to spot. And you may also find their stories just as fascinating as the creatures themselves. What you got? Some of these little mounds inside this clam shell. Well, first of all, it's kind of a neat clam. It's a varnished clam. They filter out their food real efficiently, so they also filter out toxins in the water. But these little barnacles, you know about barnacles. They're floating around as larvae, and then they, when they want to attach, they cement their head onto something, sometimes a clam like this. And then they have their feet up when this is underwater, you could see the little feet moving around, oh. bringing food into, the, into their mouth. As my mom would say, oh my land. Yeah, <laughs> oh my land. <laughs> it's not a solid piece like a clamshell or a snail. They're little plates that attach, kind of like a walls of a house. And this is a moon snail that was killed by something. As you can see the broken up shell. And whenever you see something like that, you know who did it? Do you know who did it? No. The red rock crab. Because the rock they're the crab. Huh? Yes, they are the only ones that have uh, claws uh -huh. strong enough to look break at, off. Look, at, kind of look like at this big crab my sister found. <laughs> Ooh. Can you tell me what you got there? It's a real live crab. He's alive. Oh, look, and it's opening back up. It looks just like a flower. Or a mouth. Or a mouth, yeah. <laughs> Which is what it actually is. Yes. Oh. oh. Hey, hey, you just got clam. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, look at the hole in there. The clam's no longer there because he got slurped out by oh. a moon snail. What? Drilled that little hole and sucked out all the clam before we got to eat it. What does it drill it with? It's got a little hard radula, a mouth part that's kind of like a drill. And it very slowly, while he's holding it, drills in there, then eats the clam. Moon snails are rather large snails. And like many other snails, they have a trap door that they use to seal themselves inside their shell. You don't often see them crawling around on top of the sand at low tide, because their comfort zone is below the sand. 
Here's one digging itself back into the sand after being examined by some eager beach explorers. Some other kinds of snails are found licking algae off rocks with a tongue-like scraper. Others gather together on rocks, and then, like magic, zillions of eggs appear. Another snail-like creature is the limpet, which also grazes on rocks, licking off algae and other things growing on the rocks. When moon snails die, their shells are sometimes used as mobile homes by large hermit crabs. Smaller hermit crabs use smaller snail shells. Let's take a look at some other kinds of creatures. So Karina, these sea stars look different than ones that I've seen on sandy beaches before. These sea stars tend to live on rocky beaches because these beaches are where their primary food source is. They like to eat barnacles, mussels. Um, they will eat snails if they can get a hold of them. Mm -hmm. And all those things are in much higher quantities on rocky beaches. Mm -hmm. There are a lot more barnacles on the rocks because barnacles need rocks to stick on. And mussels also like rocks. So, so if a sea star found a barnacle or a mussel on a rock, how do they get it open? How do they actually eat it? What they would do with a mussel is, you know, mussels are clamped together like this. Right. Well, the sea star wraps its legs around the mussel and starts to pry. Like using their suction-y yes. things on the bottom? Actually, Can I pick it up? Yeah. Oh, look at his little legs. Look at that. And all the stuff he's holding onto. Oh, look at you that. You are filthy, good sir. Yes, you need a bath. <laughs> Oh my god, look! Like the tentacles are stuck. Tube feet. It's a little That's tube what feet. Called. Look yes. at them, they're waving around. Yeah, he's looking for something to hang on to. They just use their tube feet to hold on to the muscle. What they do is they harden their body in a position that puts pressure on the muscle. And because the muscle is a muscle, it eventually tires. But the sea star's body is stuck hard like that. So it won't get tired. So eventually the muscle gets tired and it falls open and the sea star regurgitates its stomach, throws it up right inside the muscle, and digests it from the outside. A starfish, a baby one. I see found one like that too. You wanna go put that one back where we found it? Okay. If you see what look like miniature molehills on the beach, they could have been made by several kinds of creatures. Here's one likely suspect. It's a polychaete of some kind. It's got all kinds of legs. That's you know cool. what? I think they have some serious mouth parts on these suckers when they get big. Oh, they big. do. Yeah, yeah they can bite. They move wiggling, and it displaces the sand, and the sand comes up yep. and goes out, and then it leaves the hole. Okay. They actually will come up into the water column. Uh, what are they a food source for? Starry flounders, English sole, staghorn sculpins, but especially sea and cutthroat trout. So what's this um, thing that's stuck to the rock? This is a chitin. They're related to um, snails and clams. It's segmented like hill bugs you find in the garden that curl up. Okay. Um, they feel like they're hard though, like little shells. They are. Hill okay. bugs are hard too. But underneath it's got a snail foot, which is using to clamp tight to this rock. And if I pried it off, it would curl up into a ball, just like pill bugs. Mm -hmm. So I can't get it off. He is clamped on to prevent us from getting him off. But yeah, they slide over rocks just like snails, and they use their sandpapery tongue, the radula, to lick algae off of things. There's a lot of things that lick on this beach, aren't there? 